One more associated Jewish term, and we're going to move on. So you've got the first one, halakha. In Hebrew, the word for commandment is mitzvah, or mitzvot in plural. Mitzvah, mitzvot. So in the Torah, we find that as Moses is receiving God's instructions up on Mount Sinai, the rules he is receiving are called mitzvot, commandments. So in halakha, individual rulings and instructions of the Talmud, the written rulings of the rabbis, are also called mitzvot. Because in Judaism, they generally carry the same weight as do the commandments given by God to Moses on Mount Sinai. And it has become so in Judaism and in Christianity that the English word, words law and commandment have become synonymous and interchangeable. A law is a commandment, a commandment is a law. So today when a Jew speaks of mitzvot, he's not so much thinking about Mount Sinai. He's thinking about the many rulings and laws of the rabbis. However, just to confuse things a little bit more, the word mitzvah can mean something else. It can mean doing a good deed or an act of kindness. And I'm sorry to tell you that even this gets nuanced to a whole other level. I'm also happy to tell you we won't go there today. Now our little walk down an avenue of everyday basic terms used in Judaism is for just one purpose, to help you understand the substance of Judaism and the synagogue as it was in Christ's era and in the era of the apostles. These terms and their meanings that have your head spinning right now were as well understood for them as how to turn a water faucet on and off is for us today. The Jewish people and the Jewish writers of the New Testament, they didn't have to think deeply as they used and communicated these terms. The context of the conversation dictated exactly how to understand their meaning. It was, the in, it, it was just instinctive, it was automatic, it was easy. At the same time, the New Testament era Jews also weren't speaking or thinking in terms of explaining Judaism and the Messiah to Gentiles, whether contemporary to them or from decades to hundreds of years later. It's our problem. It's our task as modern day believers to dig and to research and to find out what these terms meant to those Jews who wrote them. Of course, the easy way out, and it's a truly false way, is to declare a Christian doctrine that says that Scripture is so mystical that whatever it means to whomever reads it, in whatever culture, whatever language, in whatever period of history we might live, that's what it means. No context is necessary. So we are told, just don't worry about what the writers intended. It's no wonder that Christianity has become a disjointed armada of rudderless ships, aimlessly wandering on a stormy sea, having lost its direction, purpose, and first love. Let's keep moving forward in the hope that we can at least help to right that ship and get back into God's will for his worshipers.